Uh, good, good evening to everyone, Mr. Chairman. I just want to ask one question. The word is, is the word of the Bible true or is the Quran true? Is that a fact? Is that question being directed at Mr. Yes, sir. You see, I was giving you references where Jesus Christ is need to contradict himself. Jesus makes a statement that of those whom you gave me, I have lost none. Simple basic English. You don't need a dictionary for that. I have lost none. Previous chapter he said, I lost only one. <coughs> now you tell me which of these two statements is true. One of them is definitely not true. Uh, one or none. So you see, now this is the whole story. The, everything is the same story. I have been giving you examples that God tells his prophets to go about naked. The Quran says, no, he doesn't instruct anybody to do anything shameful. Between the two, I am asking, leave religion one side, which is true. That God Almighty will tell you to go about naked in front of your mother, your sister, your daughter, or will he tell you to cover yourself up? What would he do? Our common sense, sane reasoning says, God will not tell you to do any such, such shameful things. Yes, I agree with that. But uh, I'm not condemning the uh, Quran, I'm not condemning the Bible, I'm just a new Christian. But I say there is Jesus because in the word of Jesus, I have seen people heal. At, at the touch of the word Jesus, I have seen people's heart being restored. Uh, I'm not going to argue further with it, but I say I'm not worried about the Bible so much and I'm not worried about the Quran so much, but I'm, I say in the name of Jesus, there's power and people can be cured. And if you want uh, some uh, examples of it, I've got a hard case, uh, a Muslim lady who was from R.K. Khan's hospital, who was sent down to home to die, but today, today I can bring her and she's still living. No, that's a question. I say there's still power in the name of Jesus. Thank you. You see, brother, you know, all this boast about healing people with heart troubles and cancer and some Muslim lady was healed. Look, the hospitals are full. If you ever been to King Edward VIII Hospital, you know, when you see there, your heart bleeds for everybody. King Edward VIII Hospital, go there and help the people there. Instead of running around to Muslim homes, you say, you know, this Muslim lady had heart trouble, she had cancer. Look, thousands of our brothers and sisters, you know, Africans, Indians, colored, they are dying. And you are wasting your time running from door to door when the, the customers are there by the thousands every morning. Why don't you go and help them? However, this is, this is a rhetoric question. I'm not, I'm not asking you to respond. But the fact is, look, this is the obvious thing. If you had the power, God gave it to you, go to the hospitals. Help the people instead of wasting your time running. Showman, salesman, businessman, Benny Hinn has built himself into a kind of one-man multinational religious conglomerate. It's estimated his ministry brings in more than $200 million a year, mostly based on his pledge that you will be healed if you have enough faith, and especially if you attend his crusades. Four years ago, we took our hidden cameras inside Benny Hinn's organization. Tonight, we'll tell you what's happened to him since... But our story isn't only about the man who promises miracles, but also about a remarkable little girl who is looking for one. Step out of your sickness, step out of your disease, and come into the river. He calls them miracle crusades. And as always, Benny Hinn's appearance four years ago in Calgary was a finely tuned event. Cancer cannot stand in the presence of the Holy Ghost. Cancer is only a name, but there's a higher name than cancer, that's Jesus! It all builds towards the miracle healing that Hinn maintains is channeled from God through him. The healing everyone here is waiting for. Fire on ya! Fire! 
what you see on TV are the lucky ones allowed up on stage. But we found out how those people who actually meet Benny Hinn are chosen. We interviewed a man who saw those miracle crusades firsthand as one of Pastor Benny's security detail. He agreed to talk with us if we disguised his identity. We called him Andrew. How do they pick the ones they want to go on stage at that point? They have staff members that go through and give them a quick, uh, quick interview. And they'll ask them, Can you, you know, what's wrong with you? Oh, I've had uh, rheumatoid arthritis of my left shoulder. I can't lift it. All of a sudden, can you lift your shoulder? Because if you can't lift your shoulder, you can't go on stage. According to Andrew, the screening system has one purpose, to keep the truly sick or disabled away from Benny Hinn. Those people are never near, allowed near the stage. In our original broadcast, viewers were captivated by a mother and daughter we met in the stands at the Calgary Crusade. Janice Brulot is a lifelong believer whose eight-year-old Grace couldn't walk because of a severe neuromuscular disorder. I said, you know, honey, we could stay up here because, you know what? I said, Jesus is up here. And she said, no, mommy, she said, I'd like to go down and see if Benny Hinn could pray for me. I said, are you sure? She said, yes, mommy. Hoping for their miracle, they tried to make their way towards the stage, but they were intercepted by Hinn screeners who ordered them to sit down. Grace and I moved over to the side. We sat and waited, and Grace asked me if... I could help her to try and walk and uh, that was kind of her faith in action and uh, so I picked her up and we tried walking back and forth and um, that was kind of a hard moment. We caught up with Janice and Grace as they fled from the arena their hopes of a miracle even a prayer from Pastor Benny now gone. It just kept saying if she healed, if she healed, and like there was such a big like rush, like yeah. That was almost four years ago. Grace Berlot is now eleven. She didn't get her miracle from Pastor Benny that night, and she still can't walk. Jenkins says he healed a growth in her abdomen that she didn't even know she had. I touch you in the name of Jesus for thy glory. Amen. We spoke to her a short time later. He healed me, like you said, something that I couldn't see within me. The crowd is so impressed that when Jenkins asks for donations, some give as much as a thousand dollars. Jenkins was so confident of his abilities, he challenged us to test him. So the next night, we brought along volunteers. These two people suffer from diabetes, and these two are confined to wheelchairs. When the healings began that night, Jenkins amazed the crowd when he claimed to heal this baby born with a severe spinal cord defect. I declare a miracle in the name of Jesus. <laughs> then, as I was sitting in the audience, Reverend Jenkins came to me. This is okay if I talk to you, sir? Have you had a physical lately? Yes. But then he got upset when I declined to answer his questions. I, I didn't come here to discuss my medical uh, needs. Yo, yeah, well, I done hit the nail on the head. Now you don't want to discuss it. Then go to that. <laughs> but at no point during the event, did he try to heal any of the people that we had brought along? After almost everyone had left, we persuaded the Reverend to see if he could diagnose and heal just one of our volunteers, Dan Dyroff, who suffers from type 1 diabetes. And you have never talked to me, sir? Never have. And I know nothing about you? Correct. So what did Jenkins think might be wrong with him? God told me that you had something wrong in the prostrate and that he was going to do a miracle if you will release your faith. That was news to Dan, because he says he never had prostate problems and was tested before and after meeting Jenkins. I spoke to him a week later. Your prostate seems okay? Yeah, no problem. He missed the boat on you. Entirely. 
Although Jenkins had agreed to sit down for an interview, it appeared that he was still upset that I wouldn't let him heal me. He erupted in anger when I tried to question him. We're not doing anything. No, I don't want nothing to do. You get out of here and you're a devil from hell is what you are. You are evil. Okay, now put that on the nationwide. That's what you are. I wanted to ask the Reverend if he was giving false hope to the critically ill. Is it fair that you go around? Is it fair that you come over here to make a living off of me? That you can't do any better than come over here to write a story, you atheist. Now get out of here. And with that, he turned his back on me and was off to his next crusade.